Well, it is no surprise or secret that Americans in general like spending money on stuff, right? So Americans, I'm speaking in general terms, not every single American, but Americans in general really like their stuff. Americans find almost a identity in their possessions, in the things that we own. According to a study that was done by Data Lab Survey, every second in America, $210,000 is being spent. That equals $12.6 million per minute. And if you annualize that, every year, Americans spend $6.5 trillion. So I think it's safe to say that Americans do like spending money. And if you look at the data, Americans also are OK going into debt in order to get all their stuff. The average uh, American has $6,270 of credit card debt. Now, I always thought, well, OK, if you make more money, then you're not going to have debt, right? The exact opposite is true. If you look at this graph, it actually shows that those who are in the lowest 25th percentile for net income have $4,830 of credit card debt, whereas those in the top 90th to 100th percentile, the richest people in America, have almost $13,000 of credit card debt, nearly three times as much. So yes, I would say that Americans in general, they like spending money. They're OK going to debt. Now, the logical thing, one would think, OK, well, here's the answer. This is America's answer. This is America's hope. All you got to do is get a really good paying job. All you got to do is make a lot of money, pay off that debt, and then start buying more stuff. And then once you buy all the stuff you want, then start saving that money because you, know, you got to have something to fall back on. You need a big savings account. That is the American way. That's almost, I dare would say, the American dream. Get the best paying job you can and just make a whole lot of money. But the Bible, <laughs> the Bible has a different message about money. The Bible has a different message about what we are called to do with our finances. And I know it might seem counterintuitive, but what if the answer to financial health is not about saving money or holding tightly onto your possessions? What if the answer is being generous with what you have? What if the answer is being generous with what you have? We are in a study looking at all the different values. We're calling this study Values to Live By. For the past eight weeks, Pastor Dennis has done a fantastic job looking at different values in the Gospel of Luke, values like friendship and forgiveness and belief. Last Sunday, Pastor Dennis and our elder chair, Steve Jones, preached a great message on the value of unity. And this Sunday, I'm going to be sharing with you the value of generosity. What does the Bible say about generosity when it, it's the book of Luke? And so I invite everyone this morning to please grab your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 21. If you don't have a Bible, that's okay, because I bet you have a phone. And all you got to do is go to Google and type in Luke 21, and you will find it. I'd love for us to get into the Bible this morning, get our hands on these pages, and look at Luke chapter 21 I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV. It says this in Luke 21. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Beautiful, beautiful passage and uh, pretty self-explanatory, right? It's that whole concept that Jesus doesn't care how much you give. He's more concerned about the heart. He's more interested in what is your heart's motivation in how you're giving. It's that whole concept, you know, if a millionaire gives $1,000, 
And look, $1,000 is a lot. I'll take $1,000, okay? But for a millionaire, $1,000, you know, it, it, it's not a lot of money for them. It's kind of, you know, just like if I were to put in a nickel or something. But what about the person who only has a few hundred dollars in their checking account, and they decide to give all of that? I, I, that's generous living. That, that is actually really being intentional with the money that you have and the possessions you have. And so that's what we're looking at this morning. In the Gospel of Luke and all throughout the Bible, Jesus talks about living a generous life. And did you know that there are more references in the Bible about money and giving and generosity than there are about heaven and hell combined? So Jesus wants us to pay attention to this. And we're going to look at a number of passages throughout the whole Bible because I want to give a whole context of what Jesus calls us to do when it comes to generosity. So three things this morning, three ways that I believe Jesus throughout the Bible is calling us to be generous. The first one is pretty obvious. We've touched on it a little bit. Be generous with your money. So if you have your outline, uh, if you're following along, or if you're at home, you can look online. We have the notes online as well. But that first blank is be generous with your money. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Here it is. For God loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> God loves a cheerful giver. So, Jesus calls us to be generous with our money. Why? Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. Again, it's not about how much you give. What's your heart? What's your motivation? Why are you giving? Are you giving to be all braggy and be like, look at me and how much money I give? Or are you giving out of generosity, out of a heart that says, I want to give? Now, uh, I, I want to take just a moment to address this concept of prosperity gospel. Anytime there's a message about money, uh, there's this tendency to think about this theology called prosperity gospel. And I want to be very clear this morning, we are not talking prosperity gospel. If you aren't familiar, prosperity gospel is very much focused on what you get, all right? Prosperity gospel is all about this entitled attitude of, well, if you give $1,000, God's going to bless you tenfold, and he's going to turn that 1000 into 10000 So go ahead and give that $100,000 and watch God turn it into a million. And before you know it, you're going to have cars, and you're going to have boats, and you're going to have a mansion. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's not, that's not what we're doing. Yeah. I know it sounds great, right? Like, and, and uh, you know, I mean, this is why it's so engaging. I mean, who doesn't love listening to someone talking about God just blessing you beyond your wildest dreams? Like, it's, it's exciting to get a mansion. <laughs> but look, God has a mansion for us in heaven, all right? This stuff here on earth, it doesn't matter. It's not going to burn us. So the true gospel, the true gospel is focused not on what you get, but how you're giving. That's the true gospel right there. It's about being selfless with what you have. What are you doing to give? What is your heart? Are, are you giving so you can get something? Are you giving so you can get a mansion? Or are you giving because you want to honor the Lord with your finances? Because you want to set up a legacy for your life and your possessions and your wealth that says, the stuff I have is not my own and I'm willing to give it away freely and generously because I know that in this life it's all gonna burn anyway, all right? So we're not talking about prosperity gospel today, okay? So just to be clear. But here's the really cool thing, guys. God makes it so clear in Scripture that he does honor 
and reward and bless us when we give cheerfully, when we give generously. Okay, not prosperity gospel, but what God says is he will take care of you. He will take care of your needs. He will grant you those desires of your heart when you give generously. That passage I read earlier, look at that one line. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Okay, we're talking about the law of the harvest. The, the more seeds that you sow, the more, uh, the, the more harvest you yield. Look at some other verses here. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your produce, and then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It's going to be put in your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So yes, God very much wants us to give, and God is very clear that if you give with that generous heart, if you give generously with a, a cheerful heart, God's going to reward you and bless you and take care of you, not give you a mansion necessarily, not give you boats and cars and millions of dollars, but God's going to take care of you. And if I can share a personal example, I have seen in my own life how God has always taken care of my family, me and Melanie. We made a decision early on when we were engaged. We said, we're going to tithe 10% of our income. Uh, the, the, the first check we write, this is back when we wrote checks, um, the first check that we write is going to be to the church, and then we'll pay our rents, and then we'll pay, you know, get food, and then we'll pay our utilities. So we had this plan early in our marriage, this commitment that we're going to always, first and foremost, give 10% no matter what. And I'll tell you, when we first got married, all right, so I was still going to school at Multnomah. Uh, we were living in Maryson Housing. Melanie was the only one working. She was working at a daycare for $9 an hour. We did not have a lot of money, Okay. And I remember one month in particular, uh, we, we paid our tie check, we paid our rent, we bought some food, and whoa, we're, <laughs> we're uh, about $150 short of, for our utility bills, our gas and our electricity. And no joke, I had no idea how we were going to pay it. I'm like, do I call my mom and dad and say, hey, can I borrow some money? I'm like, but this is weird because I just got married and I don't want to be mooching off my parents. So like, yeah, and we're praying and we're praying and we're like, okay, God, you got to do something here. <laughs> two days later, two days later, I get a check in the mail. I bought this computer three months ago, and, and there was like a rebate program where you send in the receipt, and then like forever and a day later, they finally send you a rebate check. I forgot all about the fact that there was a rebate check that we were supposed to get, and it was for almost the exact amount of money that we needed. And I just look at that check, and I'm like, thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God. I cannot explain it. I cannot, there's been so many examples in our life where God has just taken care of us, and I can't explain it except to say, what if the answer to financial health is not about saving money or holding on to your possessions? What if the answer is being generous with what you have? Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, Kevin, of course, you got, you got to say this. You're required to say this because you're a pastor, and you, you have to talk about money so people at the church will give. And No, no, that's not the case. But hey, don't take my word for it. Don't even take the Bible's word for it. Why don't we take the word of an accountant, someone who actually works with money every day, who deals with audits? So I want to invite up to the stage one of the smartest guys I know when it comes to money and finances, Scott Devinney. Come on up here, man. Well, I'll say, Kevin, if you're smart, then you will take the Bible's word for it. Okay, okay. I, I do want to take the Bible's word for it, but for all the naysayers out there, Scott the accountant, come on over here. Okay. Let me ask you a couple... Six feet. Right? Six feet, okay. <laughs> Scott the accountant, let me ask you a question here. What would you say as an accountant? Like, are, are you thinking to yourself... Okay, uh, would you recommend that people actually give money and be generous as an accountant? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I read like accounting blogs and magazines that are really boring, but uh, <laughs> even they, they have study after study showing that people who are generous with their time, with their talents, with their possessions, that they are happier, they're healthier, like socially, emotionally, even physically healthier. 
you know, as a Christian, I just see that as like, well, God made us to love and be loved. And so when you live God's way, um, by being generous, by being hospitable, by being caring about others, like it affects you. And, and the opposite is true too. When you don't live God's way and you're selfish, that, that also affects you. Okay, but if you give more money away and if you're generous with your money, doesn't that mean that you'll have less money to pay for things? Uh, correct, yes. As a CPA, I can confirm <laughs> that if you give money away, like you will have less for yourself. Like that's just math. But I, <laughs> I guess I would just say, you know, the real you know, question here is, what do you need that money for, right? I mean, I think of Ecclesiastes, and uh, there's a verse there. It says, whoever loves, loves wealth, like, will nev- or whoever loves money will never have enough. Whoever loves wealth will never be satisfied with their income. And, you know, it's, it's true. Uh, I can see that in my experience with, with governments, with people, with companies. You know, if you're looking to uh, money as your idol for, for happiness and for security, for your answer to, to all the problems, uh, it's never going to be enough because, um, you know, we can observe that you need money for some basic necessities. But beyond that, there, it's not going to provide the answer to any of the real questions. Okay, final question for you, Scott. Uh, Have you seen any example in your accounting career, have you seen any example of a company that has been generous with their money and what that's looked like for the company, if it's benefited them or not? Oh, so like, uh, how does, how does, you know, being generous benefit uh, the giver? Um, Well, I would just say, just think about it, you know, uh, would you, you know, how would you uh, feel about a company that is, you know, generous with their community and their employees and their customers versus one that's just all about profit? You know, is that one that you want to buy from? You know, do, do you want to work hard for a stingy, miserly boss? Or do you want to work hard for a generous boss? You know, would you rather... Uh, you know, share your life with generous friends and family or with uh, selfish people. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's hard for people, like, if, if there's a company, if there's a person who just doesn't care about others, it's hard for people to care about them. And, you know, it, it, it may not seem like it matters very much, like right here and now, but um, you know, over time, uh, through life's ups and downs, like it does matter. And there's business literature about that for companies, but I think, again, as a Christian, uh, we just, I just look at that and I say, well, well, that's the way that God has designed us. And when you follow God's design for life, like it energizes life and it energizes relationships. And um, I want to read a verse, because uh, it just came to mind, uh, Proverbs 11, 20, 5 through 26, it says, One gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds what is right, only to become poor. A generous soul will prosper, and he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And in my experience and observations, it's just, you know, it's true. So, there you go. Thank you, Scott. Let's give Scott a hand. So Jesus calls us to be generous with our money because God loves a cheerful giver. Point number two this morning, Jesus calls you to be generous with your possessions. Possessions, if you're taking notes, write that in. Jesus calls you to be generous with your possessions. So now we're moving beyond just the money. Now we're talking about our stuff, okay? our house, our car. Uh, What about all your collection of power tools when the neighbor comes over and wants to ask to borrow it, you know? Are you generous with it? What are the clothes that you're wearing when you're done wearing them, you know? Like, Like, do you just throw them away or do you give them away? The very food that you eat, do you say, well, that's my food, I bought it? Or do you give freely to those who might need food? The Bible calls us to, in Matthew 5, 42, give to the one who bakes from you. Do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. God wants us to be generous with all of our possessions, with all of our things, to give freely. And so often in America, again, general terms, not every American, but in general, we hold tightly so much 
our possessions, right? We have this kind of entitled nature. Well, well, I earned it. That's mine. I, I deserve to have this. You know, I, I deserve to have all these great things. I worked hard for it. You know, this is my stuff. I don't want anyone messing with it. I don't want someone scratching up my car. I don't want someone doling the blade on my circular saw. You know, like, that is kind of this attitude that we have of these possessions are our own. But God doesn't want us to hold tightly or or be stingy or miserly, as Scott was saying, with our wealth or our possessions. Um, I've shared this about four years ago, maybe it was five years ago, I shared in a sermon how my daughter, Callie, was inspired uh, just seeing some of the homeless people in our community. And, you know, cynical dad over here, you know, I see someone on the street and I just think, oh, why don't they just get a job? Uh, or, I, or I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm sure they want money, you know, so they can buy more alcohol. That's what they want. You know, but Callie, as a, as a nine-year-old, she had this compassion in her heart for the people that didn't have much. And so we talked as a family, and we started making these little care packages, just a gallon Ziploc bag. Uh, we would put a water bottle in there, granola bar, uh, fruit snacks. We'd include deodorant, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste. And we just we made dozens of these little care packages, had them in the car, and every time we saw someone, we, we would give it, right? Pastor Mike, he shared before, he would buy $10 McDonald's cards, and uh, he would just hand those $10 McDonald's cards knowing that at least uh, they could get a good meal. Well, I don't know if it's a good meal, but, you know, a meal. Um, <laughs> so, you know, but this is exactly what uh, Proverbs 22.9 is talking about. Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed. For he shares his bread with the poor. He shares his bread with the poor. Now, why? Why is it important for us to to be generous with our possessions? Why is that important? Well, I think it's really important to remember that all of the stuff that we have, that we own, that we think is ours, The reality is it's not. It's not really our stuff. It all belongs to the Lord. So be generous with your possessions because it belongs to the Lord. Look at what Psalm 50 says. Every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world and its fullness... Our mind. This is God talking. And God's saying, the world and the fullness is mine. I, I mean, and, and that's a hard concept for Americans in general who have this, you know, uh, identity with their possessions. You know, it, well, no, it's not God's. What are you talking about? God didn't work 50 hours this week to make all that money. I'm the one that did. I worked hard. This is my stuff. Look, who provided that job for you? You know, yeah, maybe you went out and you found it. But look, God has blessed you with that job. God has blessed you with the money you have. The very fact that you live in America, the very fact that you were born in this country makes you the top 1% wealthiest person in the world. So yeah, the fact that you live here and was born here, that is a gift from God. Make no mistake about it. You could have been born anywhere and you were born right here in this country. You live in this country. And so it is a gift that you are here. It is a gift that you have a job. It is from the Lord. All those nice things that you think are yours, they aren't. They belong to God. And the second that we can start accepting and realizing and understanding the fact that our stuff is not our own, guess what happens? Instead of holding tightly and saying, I don't want to give it, I don't want to let someone borrow it, I don't want to you know, move away from soon we're holding it loosely. And now, once we have a generous attitude and we hold loosely our stuff, our entire perspective changes. And so now instead of, well, I don't want anyone come over to our house because they'll just scuff up the floor and and dirty the the couch. Now you're like, hey, this person, uh, they need a place to stay for the next two months. Come on and live in my house. Now, instead of, oh, well, my car, you know, uh, uh, the, you know it's, it's really finicky and I don't want anyone to ding it or scratch it. Now you say, hey, you need to haul something to the dump? Go ahead and use my truck. Go ahead and use my trailer. 
Now when that neighbor asks you, you know, can I use your power tools, instead of saying, oh, well, they're just going to dull the blade and totally ruin the power tool, you say, sure, go ahead. Use my stuff because it's not my own. I'm no longer going to hold tightly to my possessions. I'm going to hold loosely and understand that I am called to be generous. So just to recap, Jesus calls you to be generous with your money because God loves a cheerful giver. Jesus calls you to be generous with your possessions because it belongs to the Lord. And finally, Jesus calls you to be generous with your life. Jesus calls you to be generous with your life. Look at Luke 6, 29. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. I'm going to jump to verse 34. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get the same amount. But love your enemies, do good, lend expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you'll be sons of the Most High. Listen to this. For he, the Most High, is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So why are we supposed to live a generous life? Because Jesus modeled it. Jesus modeled what it looks like to live a generous life, to be kind to our enemies, to expect nothing in return. That's what Jesus did throughout his entire earthly ministry. He was always looking to others, living generously, not thinking of himself. And Jesus calls you to do the same thing, to realize, hey, your wealth, your possessions, even your very life is not your own. It is not your own, so don't hold tightly. Hold loosely, understanding that your very life is your own. Now, here's the thing. Living a generous life, it can cost something, right? Because when you live generously, you're thinking of others, you're being a blessing, you're serving. I'll admit, it is far easier to live a not generous life. It's far easier to just sit on the couch and watch TV, um, like, that is really easy to do because it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't, it doesn't take anything to just sit on the couch and be selfish and think of yourself. But that's exactly what it is. When you're doing that, all you're doing is thinking about yourself and, and what you get out of return. Again, that, that entitled attitude, it costs something. So generous living, it can sometimes cost your time. All right? So driving a friend to the airport, it takes an hour out of your day. It takes some time. But what a blessing to give a ride to a friend who needs it. I, I think about uh, just a few weeks ago, my van broke down, and Dave Dole back there, I gave him a call. He stopped everything he was doing, and I'm sure he was in the middle of something important, and he gave up about two hours of his time. He met me where my van was at. He helped me get the right parts. We got back on the road, and I was so blessed. Dave gave up two hours of his time. He didn't need to do that. It cost him something. I don't know if he had to work later that night or whatever the deal is, but he did that to live a generous life. And what a blessing it was for me to not have to spend $150 on a tow truck, you know? I'm thankful for Dave Dole. It can cost your time. Living generously can also cost you your comfort, right? Sharing the gospel, it can be uncomfortable, but that's generous living. That's generous living at its best when you're telling others about Christ. And that's not easy to do. Like, I get it. It's awkward. It's weird to, to, to tell someone, hey, do you know about Jesus? You never know what response you're going to get. It's weird. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. I think about what Gloria did this morning on the video. I was so proud and thankful for her. That wasn't comfortable for Gloria. She didn't like doing that. But she got up there. I mean, not physically up there. Like, she was on the video. She recorded herself. And I'm just like, thank you. Gloria, thank you for your words because it blessed me. It blessed the church. Gloria was living a generous life, not thinking about her own comfort, but saying, I'm going to do something and step outside a little bit, even if it's uncomfortable. And what a blessing it was. It can cost you your energy. I've helped people move before. And guess what? I'm sore the next day. I'm sometimes sore the next two or three days. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's not easy walking up three flights of apartment stairs, hauling couches in and out. It costs you your energy, but what a blessing. To be able to help a friend, to be able to help someone in need, 
living selflessly, living generously. That's what Jesus calls us to do. Now, the ultimate example that Jesus gave for living generously was that he gave his life. He died on the cross, and that's the gospel message. And this morning, for anyone here who is not familiar with the gospel message, or if you are here this morning and you're not following Jesus, maybe even you're watching online, maybe it's a year later and you found us on YouTube, welcome. I want to tell you very clearly, I want to speak very clearly to you who is listening and, and you don't know about the saving grace of Jesus. I want to say clearly to you that Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ loves you, and he loves you so much that he gave generously his life, his very life. He gave his life and died on a cross. He died a sinner's death for my sins, all the bad things that I've done in this world, all the bad things you've done in this world. Jesus died for you. And if you want to know more about what that means to follow Jesus, if you want to know more about what that means to, to have the saving grace of Jesus Christ, please talk to me, uh, chat in on the YouTube text, uh, chat, uh, you can call whatever. But Jesus ultimately lived the most generous life by dying on the cross. Now, I know you're thinking, well, okay, Kevin, that's great for Jesus, but I'm not Jesus. I'm, I'm not going to die for the sins of the world. You're right. You're right. That would be weird, okay, and not possible. But I believe it is possible even in your death, you can proclaim a legacy of a generous lifestyle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That even when you're no longer on this earth, you can proclaim this legacy that you know your stuff, your wealth, your very life is not your own. I want to close this morning by sharing the story of a friend of mine who passed away a couple years ago. His name is DJ Jackson, and he was the worship pastor at Brush Prairie Baptist Church from 2012 until about 2017. And him and I were about the exact same age, uh, so we we connected, we uh, did Christmas collaborative stuff together, we did worship nights together, we would go out to lunch, and we would share uh, just what it looked like to be a worship pastor in Clark County. And I really enjoyed my times with DJ. He moved in 2017, and then on September 19th, 2019, he was diagnosed with a very rare, very aggressive form of liver cancer. And he posted about it on Facebook. And he said, he said these words right here. He said, I don't want to die at age 37. Truly, I had a very different vision of how my life would unfold. I will do everything reasonable to fight this, and I hope for a miraculous recovery. But I'm at peace nonetheless. My life is not my own. And if God decides to take me home earlier than I prefer, I trust his ways are good and wise and always what is best. And then he ended his post with this. Finally, I encourage you, please try not to limit God, either by thinking God can't heal or by insisting that he must. I believe he still works miracles. But if God has planned greater good to come through my death <clears throat> and then could be achieved by my healing, I'd hate to circumvent his wise plan just to avoid a little suffering. DJ passed away five weeks after posting that on October 30th, 2019. And even now, in his death, he is living a generous life. His legacy of who he was and what he was all about, knowing that his life was not his own. 
he's proclaiming that years later. And I know there are people here this morning who have lost loved ones. I know there's people here this morning that are hurting. But to have the hope and the comfort of knowing that they lived a generous life, that they realize their life is not their own. And make no mistake that even in their death, they are proclaiming the gospel truth of generosity. I'm humbled and I'm honored by DJ and the life that he lived. And that's the kind of life that I want to proclaim. And it might cost me something. It might cost me my time, my, my energy, my comfort. But I want people, when I die, I want people to say, yeah. There was Kevin. He was always serving, always helping, always seeing who needed something. He didn't hold on to his stuff. He gave it freely. Is that what can be said about you? This morning, I challenge you this morning, what are you holding tightly to that maybe you need to loosen that grip just a little? Are you holding tightly to your money or your possessions or even your life? What is it that you can do today, this morning, whether it's saying, okay, I'm not gonna worry uh, about having, you know, hoarding all my money. I'm gonna start giving it. Or I'm not gonna worry about being so particular with all my possessions. I'm gonna let people borrow it. Or your life. I'm not gonna worry about living a comfortable life sitting on the couch watching TV. I'm gonna go out there and be a blessing to others and I'm gonna give my time and I'm gonna give my comfort and I'm gonna give my energy. Jesus calls you to be generous with your money because God loves a cheerful giver. Jesus calls you to be generous with your possessions because it belongs to the Lord. And Jesus calls you to be generous with your life because Jesus modeled living a generous life. I asked Sam and the worship team if uh, they could do a song right out of my message, this song called My Heart Is Yours, because I think it fits so perfectly with everything I'm saying. The, the words of the song says, uh, uh, it says, I give you my heart, I give you my life, Jesus. And then that chorus says, my heart is yours, take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. And then the bridge is a familiar hymn, it says, all to Jesus, I surrender, all to him, I freely give. Are you freely giving this morning? Are you freely giving your life, your wealth, your money, your possessions, or are you holding tightly this morning? Let's change that. Let's think about what financial health looks like, <clears throat> not about having the most money, not about having the most savings, but what if, what if it's about being generous with the stuff that you have, living a generous life? Let's pray.